And now my fourth example of a linear program. Um, the only thing different about this one is on the other, on the previous three, I referred you to the solver video. I had a couple students say, could you work one all the way through, including the solver? And so that's what we're going to do with this one. So let's see, we have uh, three models of mountain bikes and uh, a time for assembling and painting are shown over here on the table at the right. We're limited in our time available for assembly and painting. And then we have some profit values. So how many of each type should be produced to maximize profit? We have three types of bicycles here stated. So uh, since I'm talking about model A, B, and C, that, that's just kind of keep it simple, okay? We'll just actually use those as our variables. So capital A will be the number of Model A bikes we make, and so on. Uh, units here is just the number of bikes made for, for <laughs> mad, <laughs> made for each of these three models. Okay, so a three variable problem. So let's figure out our objective is to maximize or minimize something. Very common in business. You want to maximize profit. That's the case here. So we're going to use these same three variables, A, B, and C in this statement. But since we're talking about profit, we want to use as coefficients the profit values for these models. So Model A has a profit of $25 for each one, so that would be 25A. Uh, model B has a coefficient of 22, because that's the profit. And then finally, Model C, the coefficient is 24, because that's the profit on each of those model bikes that we make. Now, what's next? We got our constraints. Always have some of those. So let's see. We are constrained by assembly. Here, let's do that one first. So recall that when you do the statement for assembly, every number you grab anywhere here in the problem needs to be talking about assembly. So here we want to be grabbing the 4, 3, and the 2. Those are the assembly coefficients. So we would have 4a plus um, 3b and then plus 2c. And a constraint always has to also have then, um, you know, what we're constrained by. We are, only have available 205 hours for assembly, so we can't go over that. So that would be the less than or equal to 205. And let's do our next constraint, which, you know, will be for painting. So there we're going to be using the coefficients of, you know, it takes two hours, two hours, and three hours for each bike from these, these various models. So that would be 2A uh, plus 2B and then plus 3C. And what are we constrained by? Well, we've got 115 total hours for painting looks pretty good. We've incorporated all the information. We can't make negative numbers of bikes, so all three of our variables have to be greater than or equal to zero. Our, we call that our non-negativity constraint. So let's see now about uh, trying to solve this problem. I'll scroll down a bit. We have everything we need right here. So first, we'll create what I call a variable box. We have three variables. We have A, we have B, and we have C. And I'm just a little fussy. I like, I like to have things centered in my cells usually. Oh wait, there I am. Uh, so again, just, just kind of creating a pleasant looking 
spreadsheet here. The values of A, B, and C will be in the cells right underneath them. I'll just highlight those so they're easy to locate. So there, that is in the Excel sheet how I create the variables, the first part of every linear program. The next thing I want to do is create the profit statement. So for profit, what I first want to do is look at this profit statement and transfer just the coefficients here and have them lined up underneath the variables they go with. So 25, 22, and 24. Now there's a neat Excel function which is uh, known as the sum product. And what the sum product will do is it will take the 25 and multiply times this cell. So it'll do 25 times A plus 22 times B plus 24 times C, which is exactly what this statement is. Now here's how it does it. Um, I'll come down here and I look for sum product as a formula and grab it. Now what you'll do is you'll take these three coefficients, the 25, 22, and 24, you'll put a comma, and then you grab the variables. Now, one thing I want to do before I close that parenthesis, I'm going to be creating several more statements using this sum product. So while we're on the variables, I recommend you do a function for, um, I like to call it nailing those down. It's called absolute reference. That'll help us later on when we copy our formula. So there we go. Now why is this zero? Well, because these variable cells are currently zero. I'm also going to draw some attention to that by highlighting it. That will be our objective function cell. And maybe just as a reminder, since we were maximizing that, I'll just indicate, you know, a reminder, maximize this thing. Now, let's work on assembly. Take the coefficients from the left-hand side of the assembly statement, the 4, the 3, and the 2. Now, to do the sum product of that, we can copy that it down. Um, let me let me go and get rid of the um, highlighting on that. Okay, if I put my cursor on this now, notice what it's doing. It's taking the numbers in row 26, which are the assembly values, and it's still multiplying them times the numbers in row 23 the variable ones. That's why we wanted to make the values in row 23 absolute reference. Now, of course, with assembly, the, we then also have the inequality in the number 205. So I'll put the inequality here and I'll put the number 205 to the right of it. Now let's do painting. Grab the coefficients from painting, the two the two and the three. Uh, to get the sum product, we again can just drag that down. Let's see, this is also a, a uh, and is less than or equal to, and the number on the right is one, one, five. This is all we have to do in our spreadsheet. I know we have this thing that says our variables can't be negative, but that can be handled in the next step using Solver. Okay, now just in case someone watched this video first and they may not have Solver installed, so very quickly I'll run through this real quickly. F click File up here in the upper left-hand corner and then come down to Options. Click on Add-ins to double click on it. And then Manage Excel Add-ins Go. So I will click Go there. And the last uh, box, Solver Add-in, make sure that's checked and click OK. 
Now, if you've done that accurately, click the data tab here at the top, right here, and you'll find most likely all the way to the right an analyze tab that has solver. Your screen may not show the word solver. If not, the icon is this question mark with an arrow. So select that. Here we go. I'm just going to reset all. Set the objective. That is the cell that contains our objective function. Our objective function was profit, and we created that profit statement here using the sum product. So it's that cell in yellow. Now use the, you know, the correct choice here. We are maximizing profit. Uh, it starts out always having max check, so that's good. Now it says by changing the variable cells. That's the first step we did in our spreadsheet. Our variable cells are A, B, and C, but they actually reside in these three yellow C's underneath the labels A, B, and C. Now we go and add constraints. You'll click the word add. Now you can add constraints one at a time, but, but, these constraints are both the same direction. If they were different directions, I'd have to do them one at a time. But since they're the same, I can do them at the same time. Here's what you do. You first select the left-hand side of this, of, you know, essentially these inequality statements. Less than or equal to is great. There are other options like greater than or equal to, but less than or equal to is what we want. And from then for this, the right-hand side, you just select the right-hand side here. And it, it's essentially adding both those in at the same time. Since we have nothing else we have to add in, we will click OK. If we had more to do, we'd click Add again. Now what do we have to do? Well, you know how we said our variables here had to be non-negative? Checking this box will handle that. Great. It's probably already selected for you. The solving method for a linear program is the second option here. It's called the simplex method. Now everything looks good here. So every linear program you'll select the simplex method. I think we're in good shape. I'm going to click solve. All right, I have a double screen. Let me drag this over here for you. To make sure you're in good shape, always read this message in bold. Solver found a solution. All constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. That's exactly what you want to read. Sometimes students ignore this, but this can give you an error message if you did something wrong. But since it looks good, I'm going to click OK. Now, don't whatever you do, don't stop this video. We've got values of 32.5 and 25 and 0. But I'd like you to remember, what do these represent? What's this 32.5 mean? That means to make 32 and a half bicycles um, of the Model A variety. Well, that doesn't make any sense, right? You can't sell a half a bicycle. Now, if you watched my previous examples, you know, you can, you can plant a half an acre. That would be okay. You can have a perhaps a half a quart of ice cream, I suppose, but you can't have half a bicycle and still plan on selling it. So even though we didn't actually make any mistake at this point, we're, we don't really have any reason to be satisfied with the answer. We want to improve this. Now some students uh, as a guess will go, well maybe you can just round up. The problem is if you round, like if you round it at the 33, um, what ha happens is you can end up violating constraints. So rather than do that, we actually need to rerun this. So I'd like you to go up to the top, data, pick that again and grab solver another time. And there's a neat little constraint we can do to fix this problem. So here in the constraint area, first make sure you click in there and now do add to add a constraint. The trick is this, we'd love to have all these values here turn out to be whole numbers. Another way of putting it is we want them to be integers. So what we can do here on the left, we can select all of our variables. Don't just select the one, make sure you select them all. 
And then here where we have less than or equal to, look at the options. Ah, you see, you see INT suggesting the word integer there. Select that. And so what it's saying is our variables will make sure that they come out to be integer. By adding that constraint, we'll now get an answer which will make more sense to us. So add the integer constraint, click Solve. Again, read this, found an answer, integer solution with intolerance, all constraints are satisfied. That's, that's basically saying we're good. We'll click OK. And notice what the answer turns out to be when you're not allowed to make half bicycles. Remember how C was actually zero before? Now the optimal answer turns out to be 35, 21, and we'll actually make one bicycle from the Model C variety. There's our profit, 1361 in uh, dollars. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Here's a little bit of advice. Um, this is technically known as a an integer linear program. Will you necessarily realize when you first do the problem that you want to select the integer constraint? No, perhaps not. Rather, a good idea is to make sure that once you finish the problem, you ask yourself, does the answer make sense? If the answer makes sense, you're, you're good. If it doesn't make logical sense, then you can consider, like I did, going back and adding the integer constraint. So once again, can't make a half a bike and sell it. So we, we wanted to make sure we made a whole number of bicycles. So this added a little bit twist. I hope it helped you seeing me work the problem all the way through, and good luck.